chose this title because my writing is about the struggle for freedom for my pet fish, which also made me think about the world as a whole. During the drafting process, my motivation that kept me going was the emotional attachment to my fish because I had already lost so many of them in previous scenarios. The cherishing of my pet fish had become such an important thing to me. The following is only an excerpt of my original small moment narrative, but before I begin, uh, I would just like to take a moment to thank my core teacher, if she's here today, but her name is Miss Hiding for providing so much valuable guidance and support in my writing development process. Freedom. The steady heartbeat of the analog clock continued to tick loudly into the evening, breaking the silence of the night every so often. Along with the tick-talking, grasshoppers chirped enthusiastically stirring the night and making whimsical and fantastical harmonies. The dim old lamp provided the only source of light and heat at the moment. The heater was turned off and all the other lights had disappeared since all of my other family members had already gone to sleep. Most people would find this atmosphere mysterious and shrouded in solitariness. I find evenings much like this a perfect time to read a good novel. After I finished my book, when I was starting to head upstairs to my room to get some sleep, I suddenly realized I forgot to feed my pet guppy, which still doesn't have a name. I dashed to the fish tank, concerning my pet guppy may be losing patience waiting for her meal. My fish tank is actually a 10 gallon clear glass rectangular prism that holds more than 30 fries or baby guppies and one female fish the mother of all fries, and my pet guppy. She is a dull colored fish, excluding her bright red tail with black speckles randomly placed. It seemed to glow in the bright moonlight. That's a lot of fish, I thought to myself. Even though the fish have been a part of my family for approximately two months, it still constantly surprises me how cramped the tank is. It has a huge black filter and a warm heater along with other small objects where fish can play hide and seek, all of the objects together taking up nearly half of the tank. Nevertheless, nothing is better than home, and they have a more or less cozy one. What I observed in the tank nearly made my heart jump out of my chest. The guppy was stuck between the front glass wall and the Ziploc plastic bag that the flies swim in. No matter how much effort she put into getting out, she could not take control of her situation. Swim, fish, swim, I shouted silently. It appeared that all the fries had woken up and also started to encourage her. They swiftly swam to the side of the bat, trying to break free and help their mother win freedom. I read my options to save her in my head. Time passed, making me very worried, tired, sleepy, and running out of options, just as if there was a time bomb ticking away at its final seconds. I had to improvise. I leniently shook the fry Ziploc bag from the top of the zipper, enough to allow adequate space between the glass wall and the flexible container. <coughs> Understandingly and willingly, she casually swam from the corner to the open water, which, I must say, surprised me. What a relief for me and the fish. My desperate and life-threatening task was done. Soon after those freakishly frantic 15 seconds, she stared at me with unblinking, bulging, dark eyes, as if to say, thank you for saving my life. Fish apparently can think and use logic very well. People sometimes can also be caught in an undesirable situation between the glass wall and a Ziploc bag. You may get free with your own might. On the other hand, you may not. Poverty in some parts of the world, for example, can be as cold as that glass wall. Diseases and battlefields in other parts of the world can be as much a suffocating strangle as that Ziploc bag. Lending a helping hand at moments like such is more than a charity deed, but rather an undebatable duty of every human being. I sneaked a small grin at the fish with no name, yet with an astounding character, turned off the dim nightlight and drifted into a deep slumber. Thank you.
reflection of the emotional and physical changes one goes through during their adolescent years. Through my poem, I'm voicing the thoughts of not only myself, but teenagers all around the world. And um, before I start, I just want to thank my parents, my sister, um, my core teacher, Mr. Hart, who's here, and my amazing leadership teacher, Mrs. Diana, who both been amazing all year long. And so the name of my poem is Change. Um, growing up is hard until it starts to show. We have enemies and friends surrounding us everywhere. To blend with the in crowd, you need to have fashion sense and flair. Six and stones have turned to words, and they definitely hurt me. The scars left behind are permanent, but hard to see. Pressure builds up and breaks you down. Emotions vary constantly and change from a smile to a frown. We learn to stand on our own and start off in the right direction. We try day and night, but never seem to reach perfection. Our best isn't good enough, and nothing we do is <coughs> right. We begin to find ourselves and the courage within us to fight. Online chat rooms and texting galore. We enter algebra, and suddenly 2 plus 2 isn't 4 anymore. Rumors are spread, and trust is broken. But then opportunity knocks, and a new door opens. Life is serious, and yet it's not. You face new challenges, and get through by what you've been taught. You try to tell people what's happening, what's going on in your heart, but the world that used to surround you is starting to drift apart. You just need someone next to you, someone you know will be there. You open your mouth to, to talk, but it comes out as, I don't care. It's crucial to talk to someone, to have someone by you all the time. Don't blame yourself. Growing up isn't a crime. <laughs>